How is everyone today? I hope you're all doing well. Today I'm excited to share with you some of the recent watercolors I've been working on. And these are ones I worked on in Idaho and uh, it's nice because I just had blocks. As you can see the black on the side. So these are little blocks that are great for traveling because you don't have to uh, have a, a board to tape them down to. And you can even see the container on the right. It actually folds over so it's good for traveling as well. So uh, this is a cake I've been working on um, a few dessert still lifes and I don't have this one for sale right now and I'll tell you why in a minute um, and then I also painted a mountain bluebird some chickadees and some horses and we have horses on the ranch and I thought it would be a fun challenge to paint them against the white snowy background because I think watercolor is quite challenging for capturing snow. I think it's even easier with oil paint because it just kind of looks like white frosting. And there's this tactile uh, quality to it. But with oil paint, or with watercolor, I mean, uh, you literally have the white paper and it's kind of in reverse. You're actually trying to uh, create some shadows and reflections on the snow. So here is a mountain bluebird, a bird that's uh, common in Idaho. And here is uh, some chickadees with some spring blossoms like apple blossoms. And uh, one thing I've been working on lately uh, is just practicing my sketching. And that's one reason for the horses as well. And also with my birds, I'm trying to come up with more complex poses for them and uh, subject matters this year. So instead of just the round little fat bird uh, perched on a branch, I have one that's looking down with his tail up and I'm going to try to capture more of the ha not well yeah the habitat and then um, I was gonna say uh, just the the birds as they're going about their business, I guess you could say, and try to capture more of that communication. And uh, another thing that I've been reading about in a book that I've mentioned about traditional oil painting um, is why uh, the author of the book didn't really encourage a painting from photographs. And uh, now with birds, a lot of times I have to use photographs because they just don't sit still. They're too far away. Uh, so um, especially if I'm painting birds from maybe different parts of the country, then um, I don't even have any subject matter. And um, so without a photo reference, uh, I'm quite lost just going from memory. Um, and I want to make sure that I am correctly uh, identifying birds with the proper uh, markings and so forth. So I do end up using photos quite a bit. But I am seeing some of the reasons why uh, photos can be um, not so good for working on painting. And some of those reasons are uh, that... Well, I think there are several others, but a couple that he mentioned are the fact that um, if you have a photo, if you notice uh, when we're looking at something with our naked eye, um, our brain doesn't, if you just look ahead, like right now I'm looking at something in my studio and everything on the periphery is, I it's in my uh, vision but it's not in focus so uh, in a photograph everything's in focus usually unless you're using some sort of depth perception and then you might have some fuzzy background <coughs> excuse me but so often in pictures uh, you'll get uh, everything in focus and that's not the way our eyes see and if you paint like that um, if you're painting just from literal photos uh, it's going to be 
easy to transfer that into your painting. And uh, some of the problems with that is it just is overwhelming to the brain. And that's why our human brain doesn't do that. It doesn't focus when you're looking out at a landscape on every single blade of grass. Um, and so some of the really great art uh, will have areas where there is um, very sharp focus and those are the focal points and then it'll have blurred areas. So uh, with watercolor, that's actually quite easy to capture. And I try to do that with some of the, the farther away uh, flowers. And that is just to, uh, before they're completely dry, is try to loosen them up with little bits of water and get that blurred effect. Um, I'm still trying to perfect that. That's going to take quite a bit of practice. And um, another thing you can do is subdue the background colors and, you know, bring more saturation to the focal point and to the foreground. So these are great ideas for creating uh, that depth and, um, you know, making things. One of the challenges with a painting is, you know, you've just got a flat piece of paper and to try to create that dimension. So um, another thing that uh, the book mentioned about photography is that, uh, well, my printer has three colors of ink besides black. It has magenta, cyan, which is blue and yellow. So this is a typical printer that uh, has three uh, colors of ink. So if I'm printing out a photo and then using that, I'm literally uh, getting colors made from those three inks. But with paints, you have, you know, maybe 200 pure pigments you could use. And uh, so the range is going to be so much more than you can get from a photograph. Another thing that the author mentioned, and um, I actually want to mention here, um, I feel like the post on the in the background, um, I let it dry, the one right to the right of his head, and I wish I hadn't on um, that needed to be more uh, fuzzy. I was able to go back and the one by his tail, uh, make that um, by just adding a little water before it's completely dry, it'll give it those softer edges, which um, because the fence, that fence is behind him, I want it to be less, uh, I want it to stand out less than the fence in the foreground. So I do try to go back and exaggerate um, after You'll see the finished result at the end of this video, but at the very end, I did go back and it's, I didn't record it, but I went back um, a few days later and really defined the foreground fence and uh, tried to soften the background, but it was a little too late uh, to really soften the, the right side of the fence. So um, just something that I'll keep in mind in the future. And I know there's some funky stuff going on with his legs, like they are kind of bleeding through the fence. And um, so that's something that I'll have to uh, remember going forward and plan ahead so that I um, can work out that uh, little challenge as well. So uh, this was a great project actually for working on uh, what I just mentioned, uh, which is blurring the background and having more sharp edges in the front. Um, so another thing about, uh, besides the limited colors on a photograph, is the fact that a camera is going to make, um, it's going to adjust the, the values uh, for the camera, for the computer inside uh, the camera and because it can't capture what the human eye can capture. So in real life, you're, with the human eye, you're going to see so many more contrasts of values that uh, you just can't capture with a fo photo. There's also a distortion 
uh, that can happen. If you've ever taken a selfie and you're like, why is my nose looking bigger than I think it really looks? Well, that's because it's distorted because the camera is trying to capture everything and then kind of like a map of the world, uh, the world's round. So when you make it flat and you're seeing all the countries, well, it's all distorted because that's what happens in a photo as well. So those are some of the reasons not to use photos. I also just feel like it's easy to be lazy with photos and also uh, to Um, by that I mean just like stay in a comfort zone and just uh, I think it hampers creativity as well because when I'm at home and uh, or in my studio I should say and I'm coming up with ideas you know I have so many things I could just grab some household items and make a really cool painting from them like I've painted art supplies and sewing supplies um, just from life or things in my kitchen I think that in real time you're gonna have uh, something that's more personal because it's going to be um, something that is real in your life so um, it's gonna be a real part of your life it's not just a photo from even if it's your photo from like uh, something that you're just not as connected to as the, the things in your real life and um, especially even people um, because you'll be able to capture I think those emotions and uh, again um, without uh, with a camera you just don't get all the emotions and uh, for like if you have a real piece of fruit, you might even uh, see the smell or the just the the wetness of it, and things that you just can't grasp in a photograph. Um, and then there's also I don't know how to describe it, but uh, just the way your human eye is going to look at things in real life, um, and even see the sides of them, and try to pull out more the most that you can get from an object and put it into your art even if it's like uh, Cezanne who um, actually kind of very much exaggerated things to the point where um, it bent reality but he worked from life and um, he was able to do that successfully because he was working from real life and not a photograph I believe that's my take on things so uh, I actually did kind of a Cezanne thing in this picture here where the background is crooked instead of a, a horizontal line on both sides I purposely did what Cezanne has talked about that he will bend an object like a table um, and to add the movement to a painting all right um, here's one that I didn't show that was just some horses with hay um, but I do have the other one uh, that we worked on in this picture so I hope this um, was useful and that you enjoyed this video uh, so if you haven't subscribed please subscribe I am very excited about this new year 2019 and uh, plan to share many more videos about my art and art tutorials and inspiration for my artists and collector friends.